We're really excited to have you here. With that, I pass it over to Allie Smith from Blackfeet Community College and your team. Thanks, Allie. Thank you guys. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so much for hosting this. This is amazing and it's great to see everybody. It's really an amazing experience to be able to still connect in uh, times like this. So welcome today. We're just going to do um, some presentations that kind of help you kind of discover uh, more about BCC and how unique we are. Um, within the tribal college community. So we'll go ahead and start our welcome and introduction. I'd like to introduce our president of Blackfeet Community College, Dr. Carla Bird. Thank you, Ellie. Hello everyone, good morning and welcome. My name is Carla Bird. I'm the president of Blackfeet Community College and I just wanted to extend a thank you to all those who are involved in the process of scheduling this event so that we could be together today. Um, you know, as we all know, it's been a very unprecedented year um, with COVID-19 and in some ways um, the pandemic has caused us to rethink education and here at BCC, it literally has transformed our educational process um, in less than one year. And so we've been, um, our BCC staff and faculty have just been so great in working hard. And I think one of our staff members said, we crammed about 10 years of work into one year um, with the technology platform. And so um, our BCC staff and faculty have been working very, very hard. Um, and although it's been an unprecedented year, we learned many, many things this year. Um, and so at Blackfeet Community College, we really chose a conservative safety plan. As we know, many of our American Indian people have some underlying health issues that have really made us um, at a high risk category for COVID-19. And so um, we knew that our, our, our community members were at risk. And so we chose um, fall Fall 2019, we chose to go 100% online for the safety of the community. What we found was um, we found a lot of success with the online educational platform. Um, I think initially I had really no idea what to expect knowing that we were going to um, completely 100% online, knowing that our community college is based on the foundation of in-person relationships. Um, we were really uncertain of what we would find with this online educational platform. Um, what we decided to do with our CARES money is we really ensured that um, all of our decision-making with the CARES money was uh, student-oriented and students, um, you know, so that all of the funding was based on um, the notion of trying to help our students succeed. And so we spent a lot of our CARES money in, into the IT infrastructure, um, but we also ensured that uh, we, every student had a laptop. We know that there's a lot of barriers um, for online education and sometimes not having a laptop could be a barrier to accessing online education. So we purchased 500 laptops. So every student that needed a laptop had a lap laptop. We also did a down payment on student internet with our CARES funds um, so that um, internet wasn't a barrier for online education. Um, and we also did a tuition reduction. Um, we tried to keep our enrollment afloat in many creative and innovative ways. And so we reduced our tuition um, by 50% knowing that it was an unprecedented year. And so our enrollment, um, we were able to maintain a pretty significant enrollment so that in two years, um, we wouldn't be in a detrimental situation with um, you know, with our financial budget. So um, one of the other very innovative things that we did here at BCC was um, our board, board of trustees approved debt forgiveness. And so we were able to forgive all student tuition debt. And so what we found after providing an online educational platform and providing all of these student incentives is um, we started to review our, our institutional and student data. And what we found was we did find a lot of success. We had 140 students who were identified as um, 
dropouts, meaning that they stepped out of higher education for a year or longer, and they returned back to higher education here at BCC. So 140 students out of our 419 that registered um, were had stopped out, previously stopped out of higher education. Um, we believe that is largely due to our student debt forgiveness, um, but we have yet to look at the data and really um, dive into it and see um, how many students receive the gift of debt forgiveness and how many have had a successful year. Um, we also, what we, what we also found was that we had 90 students um, for fall 2019, 90 students who were on our president's list, meaning that they've had a 3.5 or higher, which is nearly one fourth of our student population. Uh, we found that the online educational platform has helped us access populations that we've never accessed before, um, such as perhaps stay at home parents and the working population. Our student retention and persistence um, has been extremely higher, higher than previous years. Um, and so we are finding a lot of student success with this online platform and are just beginning to see what we can fully do here at BCC. Um, some of the innovative things that we've done with some grants, uh, we were supported by the American Indian College Fund grant and we were able to develop a wellness series which evolved into um, really recruiting some of our local and cultural leaders to explore areas of traditional wellness with our students. Um, we also are providing digital literacy for the campus community, um, not only for our students, staff and faculty, but also for community members. And one of the other things that we were able to do is um, the American Indian College Fund grant supported an online Blackfeet language course, um, which was this year was taught by um, an elder, Leonard uh, Weasel Traveler, who is um, from Canada. Uh, um, he is part of the Blackfoot Confederacy. Um, the Blackfoot Confederacy is comprised of four different bands. And so um, we're the Southern Pagan here in Montana. And so we're one of the four bands of the Blackfoot Confederacy. And so we were able to develop a six week series in which we've had anywhere from two to 500 um, participants log in every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, to listen to our elder um, Leonard teach the language. And so um, that has been completely 100% exploratory. It's been a pilot program. We found it to be hugely successful and, and it really is going to inform our academic programming here at BCC, particularly with our Bikani studies. Um, and so this next series, so which actually starts tonight. So if you're interested, um, you can still register for the class. It's, it's completely free. Um, it's every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, but we have the language, we have Trace Yellow Owl, who's a language scholar who will be teaching this next six week series. Um, it's every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. by Zoom. And so she's not only is she a student at Blackfeet Community College, but she was a student at Cutswood Immersion School here in Browning, Montana. And so she'll be teaching the language um, using the educational uh, framework that was taught at Cutswood School. So there's still time to register. Uh, I believe our link is on our Facebook page. So if you're interested in taking our class, um, please, please register using our Facebook page. Um, but with that being said, I just wanted to welcome you all um, to the Blackfeet Community College um, virtual career fair. And, and please let me know um, if you have any questions, maybe you could put it in the chat box. But thank you all for being here today. Thank you so much, Dr. Bird. So we will now start um, a video presentation um, that will share our traditional language. And can you see my screen? Yeah, okay. Is that? 
Kelly, if you can turn the volume up a little bit. I was to bed the middle. I am a ghost, I am doing a ghost. I am tough. I am the source, that's the source. I am God, you are sinner. It's the one that's open, and I am just to go to something. The man is open, and I am a sinner. Who goes in the arms? The goodness of the day is the pure. The goodness of God, the time of the day of the sinner. The man is open, and I am a bed of the sinner. Hey, Allie, just because it is hard to hear, I'm happy to maybe share my screens while they talk. Would you like me to do that? Yes, Amy, for some reason it is coming out of my um, you gotta love technology <laughs> and not my speakers. So I'm so sorry about that. No worries. Why don't I share my screen? I just would love for everybody to hear that. I know yeah. we had such a great welcome from him and we'll definitely can share a link out afterwards for you guys to watch this again. But why don't I share my screen? Thank you guys again for bearing with us as we we work through technology challenges, the world we live in. OK, well, let's try it this way and see if we can make it work. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think we were about here. My name is Iva Croft. I'm an instructor at Black Creek Community College, and I'm also the division chair for humanities, which oversees liberal studies, funny studies, and the general education requirements. I wanted to visit with you today about Bikani studies. Here at Blackfeet Community College, we offer a two-year degree, which is an Associate of Arts degree in Bikani Studies. Nowhere else can you get this degree other than at Blackfeet Community College. In order to graduate, you will have to take 30 credits within the general education requirements, which includes science courses, math courses, literature, behavioral sciences, and writing. You will also find yourself well immersed in Bikani culture and language when you start on the remainder of what is required to graduate with the Bikani studies degree. So within that two year degree, we offer NASX 141, which is the beginner level of Bikani language. The title of that class is Bikani language, origin and foundations. And then we also have NASX 142, which is the intermediate level of Bikani language and NASX 245, which is the advanced level of Bikani language. That's for a total of nine credits, three semesters in Bikani language. That also fulfills what was commonly called the foreign language requirement at the University of Montana and Montana State University. Now at the University of Montana, it is the modern and classical literatures and languages requirement, which is nine credits. So here at Blackfeet Community College, you can earn those nine credits of Bikani language and use that to what was commonly referred to as the foreign language requirement 
to get your four-year degree either at the University of Montana or Montana State University or their satellite campuses. Additionally, we also have Bikani Studies courses that are specifically Bikani. We have PKNI 120, which is Bikani Ecological Knowledge and Sacred Sites. That has a lot of depth to it. We, it is mainly experiential, so we'll be taking field trips with our students, and you will learn a lot about natural resources within the Blackfeet territory, as well as showing you some sacred sites that we do have public access to. And the, that's offered in the fall, so that way we have really great weather for you to take those field trips, which is usually one or two Fridays out of your semester, early on in the semester. And so I think you'll really enjoy it, especially when the, fall, the colors are changing during the fall of the year. We have PKNI 143, which is Bikani Society's Leadership and Gender Roles. We merge the Bikani Chiefs and Societies course and the Blackfeet Women's course into one. So that way it was more rich in delivery of content and it really gets the classroom involved in all areas of those roles of men and women in Bikani society. We also have NASX 224, which is Bikani origin stories or Bikani Nitsitapi origin stories. And that has a literature component. So we're also looking at Native American authors and what they have brought to the world of American Indian writers or people that identify themselves as Native American authors or poets. And I really think that if you come to Blackfeet Community College, you are going to either understand Bikani people if you are not from here, or you will have a better understanding of your own identity as a Bikani person. So please, I invite you to call me at Blackfeet Community College, 338-5441, extension 2258. And I would love to visit with you more about the Bikani Studies Associate of Arts degree. Hello and welcome to Blackfeet Community College. I'm Betty Henderson Matthews and I'm the Division Chair for Math and Science. We have nine members on our team who teach everything from health sciences to environmental sciences. So the degrees that we offer in our division are pre-engineering, environmental science, health science, and hydrology technician. We also offer a certificate in hydrology technician assistant. We also can have you get ready for your nursing programs by offering all your prerequisites that will enable you to apply to many different health science degrees. Uh, we welcome you. We have a brand new LEED Platinum building with all of the new supplies and equipment that you need to study science or take your math courses. So welcome and hopefully you will look into more information into our division. I'm the Director of Library Services at Blackfeet Community College. We're the Academic Library, the Community Library, and the Tribal Archives for the Blackfeet Nation. We offer a variety of different programs and services to our students and community. We do information resources, information instruction, research assistance. We have plenty of uh, online databases that we assist students to use. We have done the digitization projects, and we are currently in the process of doing an oral history project for our community. We do a lot of community programming with art, science, and technology, and a lot of that programming is geared towards youth. We also have a, hand in, uh, a lot of early literacy projects in the community. So welcome to Lucky Community College. Okay, 
Thank you so much, Amy. Of course, happy to help. And that was a glimpse of um, a preview of our campus, as well as some of our excellent instructors and division chairs. So now we'll give a brief introduction of the Student Support Services Division that um, helps enable each of our students. So I'll go ahead and start. I am Ali Smith. I'm the admissions technician. Um, so I am kind of the first point of contact for a lot of students that um, come and want to be a part of um, starting school here at BCC. And then they do transition over to registrar and registration. So I'll go ahead and introduce our registrar. Hi, my name is Helen Horn. Welcome everyone to Black Peak Community College virtual. Um, this year, like Carla had alluded to that, it was a challenge for all of us. Um, we switched our database from one database to a new database management system. And so we had that transition. We had COVID transitions. We had um, our faculty, our staff, and our students all had to learn um, multiple platforms and how to register online and all of these things. So I do um, give a hand, hand shake to our, our uh, students because they really stepped up. And I believe that um, we did have, and we will continue to have a lot of success with this online um, delivery for them. Um, some of the things that our office does is we are responsible for the academic records of the institution. And um, we had to process all of these things online. So we had to learn more other programs to help us to put our forms online, uh, things like that. It was challenging, um, but I believe that we were able to um, overcome all of the, the obstacles that, that would pop up and uh, through working with all of the staff and especially our IT people, I really um, um, applaud them because of all of the work that they did. And, and like my, my problems that I had in my office sometimes, and then I would think, well, there's probably a whole lot of other people sending them emails, but they were so good about it. Um, I think that with Ali, she did the admission side of it. And that was, again, um, she had to learn a whole lot of things on the fly because we were the first ones to go live with our new database management system. And um, it got a little wild, but we were able to come through all of those challenges. And I just think that um, a lot of you schools out there probably had some or all of those same challenges that we also did. And, um, I think Blackfeet Community College, right along with all the other tribal colleges, we have gone above and beyond to really reach out and really offer our students support, um, walk them through things sometimes. We, we had a joke at the college that before COVID, no one knew our cell phone numbers. And then all of a sudden we were just throwing them out there to everybody, you know, call my cell phone. And then you get these calls like, who's calling me now? But you would just answer because you were giving your number up to so many people. Yeah. So um, there was a lot of things. And I just think that um, it's going to make all of us stronger. It's going to make our support stronger. Um, our students are definitely, I know that they're with graduation coming up. Um, I would really like some information from all of the schools. If you could just drop it in the chat and tell me how are you guys doing graduation? Um, we're looking at last year we did a, an outdoor ceremony and I was so thankful that we were able to do that. And um, so just give me your ideas on what you guys are doing. Uh, that's where we're at right now is planning graduation um, with an indoor plan. I guess an outdoor plan as the first option and then a modified indoor plan if, if we are not blessed with a beautiful day like we were last year. And so welcome everyone. Um, I will turn it over to Gaylene Descharm, our financial aid officer. Hi, I know some of you guys may remember me. Um, I have been to other, um, you know, 
areas and stuff in regards to um, some of the stuff that we're doing now and then the student ones. Um, I'm the director of financial aid. I've been in financial aid since 2006 and I fortunately have been the financial aid director since 2015. Um, my office basically is here to assist the students, you know, in order to them to get scholarships and financial aid. Um, and we work to make the stuff eligible to students who without help would be unable to attend Blackfeet Community College. Um, we administer state, federal, national, um, and institutional financial aid assistance, including um, areas such as in grants, uh, scholarships, student employment, and students applying for financial aid are notified of which programs that they're eligible for. Um, we also adhere, you know, to compliance and stuff with the Department of Education. Uh, we assure that we're following their information. And when a student submits their financial aid application, I go through their um, academic history, check out if they're eligible, how much they're eligible for. Um, and then we also offer the student, you know, the information, what they're eligible for, and let them know that we welcome them to Blackfeet Community College. And then that we let them know what type of funds and stuff that they're eligible for. Um, the financial aid application, I pretty much everyone should know that the application is a year to year application. I'm not quite sure why, but some of the students don't understand that, uh, especially the younger generation, they'll come in and say, well, I wasn't sure that the application was due every year. So that's one of the points that I've been pushing a lot this year is to let the students know that this is a year to year application. Uh, once you do it, you you can expect it, you know, to work to next year that we have to do every single year. Um, and then the we do work with them on FAFSA renewals. Uh, this year, like um, Helen and Dr. Berg were saying, it has been a challenge, even in financial aid, even though sometimes most of the information that you receive on financial aid is typically online. This year, we had to go through a lot of different steps to get the institutional forms that we require, uh, some of the uh, verification worksheets, uh, if a student is verified by the Department of Ed. So basically what we did was we created and worked with our um, IT and also with um, Trevor Spotted Eagle. He's our media specialist. Um, he had helped us create some forms that we were able to put online using JotForm. And they're it was a pretty simple program. After he got it started, I went in and started creating forms for financial aid. So majority of our forms now are online. Uh, some of them are in PDF format, which is available on the website. And our website's www.bfcc.edu and then mine is slash financial aid. Uh, all the forms are on the financial aid website. Um, and like we had to another struggle that we went through is we switched to a new software program. Uh, we went from what our current was Genzibar and we switched over to Blackboard. Um, that in itself was something that we had to learn on a fly. So basically um, everything that we've done so far, we've worked with the students. Um, I've set up Google Meets with the students. If a student had a question, I helped them walk through their financial aid using Google Meets because we do have um, Google as our platform. So a majority of the students already had access to such things as Google Meet. And a lot of the high school students that were coming into Blackfeet Community College are already use Google Meets. You know, um, they already understand the whole Google platform, you know, like Google Documents, uh, Google Meet, you know, Google Sheets, all of that. So they pretty much knew exactly how that works. So it was a lot easier for me to go through that. Um, and then one of the other things that we had issues with with the students was they had trouble printing because, you know, on campus, that is provided for them. But they were home, so what we did is, in student services, we got together collectively and we were able to raffle off and basically give out printers, scanners to students, along with uh, reams of paper and ink, and then we were able to give them out to the students. Um, the students really were appreciative, and we also were able to give out stylus pens so that way they could sign their PDF form on their iPad or their tablet. So that was one of the other things that we were able to do for the students. And I myself, um, I set up an area for financial aid to have weekly forums on Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, the topics that we covered were such things as SAP, satisfactory academic progress. Uh, I set up a FERPA workshop, you know, a forum. 
uh, we I went ahead and did uh, scholarship information such as the college fund. Um, I also went through our Blackfeet Higher Ed program uh, application. I went through um, like what the educational planner is, what my advisor does, just certain things, you know, return of Title IV, what it means for the student, uh, what it means to be 600% for LEU, uh, pace of progression, all of that. We did forums weekly. Uh, this week, um, I will be covering what role financial aid plays across campus. Not very many students understand that financial aid is a really important process for the entire campus, not only from the student, but all the way through the staff, faculty, the faculty understand how important it is, what their role is. I work with them um, to get their information for the students to complete the students' files. And then I work with the um, middle management and upper management uh, when it comes to accreditation. So there is a lot of work that we do in financial aid, not only for the students, but also for the for Blackfeet Community College. Um, and then we also have our school code on uh, which is 014902. A lot of the students don't understand what a school code is. So what we've done is teach them that each school has its own electronic uh, mailbox. And I just tell them that it's the school code, which is basically a mailbox. So that way they can get all the information for you. Um, another thing I realized too, is that the students are having a little bit of issue with the prior, prior year. They don't quite understand that you have to go two years back to fill out the financial aid application. So I've been working with the students and their parents. Um, and I also set up a two financial aid workshops this semester, one for independent students and then one for dependent students. I invited the high school seniors and then we also have a pending uh, I see a pending workshop with them where I'll be going on Google Meet and meeting with the high school seniors and their parents and helping them fill out the application. I always Thank tell them so that. so much, Gaylene. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Financial so, aid, there's just so much to learn about. <laughs> Thank you for stopping me, Allie. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I was just going to keep going. <laughs> You do so much for, for our college and our team, and we really appreciate it. And I'm sure all the representatives can appreciate that too, how much work goes into financial aid. Thank you so much. So now we'll turn it over to the Academic Enrichment Services team. Um, there's a group of five over there, as well as Karen Davis, who is the Disabilities Coordinator. So we'll go ahead and um, turn it over to Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, well, let me lay a little plume on the Academic Enrichment Services Director here at Blackfeet Community College. Um, we serve 170 students here. Um, tell you a little bit about our program. Um, we serve um, first generation, low income, and individuals with disabilities. And some of the services that we provide are academic advisory, Career, go, career guidance, transfer preparations, book ordering, financial aid scholarships, graduation assistance, campus visits, and we also do the AccuPlacer assessment testing. Um, and I have my coworkers here and they can introduce each one of themselves, but we also do, do a um, open, forum for students every Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 to 3 and um, just to let them know what updates and we have like financial literacy during those times um, kind of like a wellness series we kind of did with our students also and just you know updating them and um, talking with them reminding them about you know just anything and everything with you know COVID-19 going on and you know, we're finally coming back into a norm here. The reservation is finally opening up. Um, so yeah, um, I'll let my coworkers introduce themselves. And thank you. Where's that general back? <laughs> so just a reminder to you guys, we, we stop right at um, 1245. So we have four minutes of... Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, my, my name is Warren Juno. I'm one of the student support specialists here with AES. Uh, 
I just recently started and I'm very excited to be part of the BCC family and helping give the students choice and hope. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Warren. Hi, I'm Andy Hall. I'm the academic support specialist for the AES program. Hi, my name is Marissa Bremner, and I'm the administrative assistant for AES. I'm sorry if I'm echoing. Hi, Marissa. Thank you. And we also have Daryl Blackstar. He is our AES Learning Center coordinator. And that's where we're at right now is in our learning center, our computer lab. And we also have Karen Davis here and she can introduce herself. <coughs> okay, everyone. My name is Karen Davis. I'm the disability coordinator. Uh, <clears throat> this year, for, uh, has been a learning experience for me as far as uh, technology. I'm not very technology savvy, but I learned a lot. Another thing that I found out that was a positive for me is um, working in a disability area. It's not too many students are willing to admit they have a disability because they're in college. So <clears throat> with the work of our, our um, director, um, we set up meetings and my meetings are uh, Monday and Wednesdays. And uh, I get a lot of emails from students because uh, I don't know one of the reasons or they wouldn't come to my office, you know, because we're in a place where, uh, you know, we have a lot of students coming and going. So I found out that with being virtual that they're able to um, email me or call me and I got a lot, a lot more information in this, this semester or last semester and this semester was quite a year because I bonded with a lot of students that are out there with disabilities. Some of the people that I didn't even know that was, but, <clears throat> but that was a positive for me and welcome to BCC everybody. Thank you so much, Karen Davis and Elaine and everyone in the AES team. Thank you so much for being here. So we have about five more minutes left. So we're going to, uh, I'm sorry. We forgot about. So we're going to jump over to share the screen um, and hear from um, some of our students. So Raina Heavy Runner is the TCU Student of the Year for Spring 2021. So Raina is an elementary education major. She came right out of Browning High School and started her educational journey at BCC. She is graduating this year and going directly and started the two plus two in elementary education and will be a soon graduate of U of M Western. Um, so congrats. Dominique Crossguns is the 2020 Denison Civic Engagement Scholarship recipient. She is a health science major and will be graduating next year and on into the nursing program. So congrats, Dominique. Christy Farmer. Christy Farmer is the Montana Student Volunteer Award winner. Uh, she's an addiction studies major in the class of 2021. Um, and I would like to read a little bit of her story. She has really um, have blossomed throughout the last couple of years. So I'm going to read directly from her story. She says, my name is Christy Farmer. I, my experience here at Blackfeet Community College has been one of the most rewarding experiences for me. Before deciding to enroll in college, I was in a hopeless place just being released from prison. I was hesitant at first due to thinking that I was not smart or good enough to be here. Walking through those doors was almost impossible for me. I look back at the beginning and see where I'm at today. Oh, how much has changed. I'm no longer that scared and shy person that I was in the beginning of my journey here. The staff here at BCC helped shape me into the person I am today. They pushed me to succeed and gave me opportunities that I didn't know were possible. So here I sit today thinking back on my last couple of years. I couldn't be more grateful for walking through those doors. I am getting ready to graduate this spring with two 
associate's degrees, one in addiction studies and the other in social work. I am so proud of myself for all my accomplishments up to this point. I am so happy I did not give up and give in to my thoughts of thinking that I was not good enough to be here. I keep moving forward and will continue on with my education with the skills I have developed from my time here at BCC. Amazing, Christy. We are so glad you are here and love your story and can't wait to see the rest of your future. So just to recap, um, at Blackfeet Community College, our campus is approximately 800 acres. And on there, we have a career center. Uh, we have a bookstore and a grill to offer all of our students when they return a healthy meal, as well as some awesome gifts. We also offer a workout center, uh, fully equipped, super nice, and a daycare center for our students so that they're able to also have childcare during their classes. So we also have a Medicine Spring Library, um, which is an academic library, and a greenhouse that grows amazing uh, produce um, and lots of great vegetables that is given back to the students and community. Um, for our academic year for fall and spring, we've had over 727 students that uh, registered and enrolled at BCC. We offer 16 degrees, six of those being certificates from everything from business to social work, education, nursing, geographic information systems, hydrology technician, and we have two plus two degrees with our education program, our business, social work, and we are so excited to be uh, developing a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And so that is um, what we have for BCC. Are there any questions? We'll turn it over to the, to the live questions. If you are able to unmute yourself and have any questions or please drop them in the chat box. Thanks so much, Allie. And just a big round of applause for the BCC team. You guys did amazing. It was so wonderful to pop around your campus and see everyone. I don't know about the rest of you on the sessions, but some of that is the most valuable is just to see everyone. I don't know about you guys, but we often email with folks for years maybe and never see each other. And so it's really nice. Thank you for inviting so many of your team members to be here today. Uh, it was really, really wonderful to meet you. And I, I will be sitting with Christy's life story for, for a long time. Those are inspiring student stories. So thank you for sharing those as well. 